I think fans of horror anthologies are really going to enjoy Satanic Hispanics. I mean, that title alone just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? <laughs> Okay, I first found out about this particular movie horror anthology thing through Polly's channel at Latino Slant. And given that I like horror, I'm not super crazy about anthologies though, to be honest, but I like horror and this looked interesting. So I found out it was playing at a theater near me only one night, one time. That was all that was available. Now, I don't know if that's because it's in limited release. The day that I saw it, as of the recording of this video, it's September 15th, I saw it last night on the 14th. I ended up doing a double feature that night. Instead of going to see Haunting in Venice tonight, I went to go see it after I saw Satanic Hispanics. So I'm not sure if this is gonna get a wide release, but I'm glad I had the opportunity to watch it on the big screen. So basically, like I said, it's a horror anthology. It's split up into about five or six chapters maybe so it starts off there's this guy that the police find and well his chapter is called the traveler so the traveler is like the overarching storyline to all of these different smaller stories that are told through the that's the traveler right there so through the course of his interrogation he tells these different stories. The first one's called The Traveler, which is his story. The second one's called uh, Tambien Lo Vi. And the other one, number three, I think was El Vampiro. Number four was Nahuales. Uh, number five didn't have a title. And then maybe like, I don't know if like, if there was a number six and that was called The Hammer of Zanzibar. Anyway, I don't remember. It's kind of running together, The Hammer of Zanzibar. Oh my gosh. So he's telling this story. These are the two cops that are interrogating him. That is the traveler, like I said. Each story is done by a different director and there's a kind of a bit of comedy woven throughout most of them, actually, I think. I believe the only one that didn't have comedy in it was the story of the traveler or much comedy at all. Maybe there was a little bit of comedic dialogue, but anyway, the only one that I can think of besides that one off the top of my head that wasn't really comedic at all was the one called Nahuales. And probably out of all of them, that may have been my least favorite entry. I don't know. I just, that one didn't resonate with me as well as the others. There was one, the very beginning, I didn't exactly understand what was like, I don't know if the different horror aspects to these various mini stories have to do specifically with Latin American culture. Like the very first one, I don't know if that's something that is specific to Latin American culture. The Nahuales definitely appear to be a vampiro. No, because I mean, you know, vampires can be, I mean, they're from like Eastern Europe or whatever. That That's the origin of vampires. But anyway, definitely San La Muerte is of, it's, it's of it's Latino origin. So he tells all these different stories. They're not really related to one another. They're kind of related in the sense that he's talking about portals being opened and other things coming across. In that sense, that's kind of what ties all of them together is this whole idea about these portals and things coming through. But in a sense, maybe not really because Nahuales didn't seem like, anyway, whatever, I, I don't know. The thing that ties them together is he's telling these stories and it always comes back to him. And his basic story is about San La Muerte and he's talking about that he needs to be allowed to leave because if not, San La Muerte is going to come and take care of everyone. And so at the end of the story or at the end of the movie, the traveler's story kind of concludes and San La Muerte shows up. And that was probably my favorite part of the entire movie. I loved the design of that character. He starts off looking one way and then he changes and he looks completely different. And I just loved everything about that part of this movie. I That's the like the first design. And then he changes and becomes what you see on the poster, which is really, really cool. Design. I loved it, loved it. My eyes just soaked it up. It was visually pleasing. Let's just say that much. As far as the stories, I did like some more than others. The first one was pretty interesting. That one you just saw before this picture was part of the first First one. The one about the vampire, <laughs> that one was actually really funny. 
<laughs> and then there's a, a, another one about the Nahuales. That one was probably, like I said, my least favorite. Felt like that had more to do with a like earth spirits, earth type of um, supernatural forces and things like that. And then the one after that was like, gosh, was that the one about the demon? And then... But but that tied into a, a little another little mini story about the, the hammer of Zanzibar, <laughs> which was kind of that one was funny too. It was interesting to recognize some familiar faces. I recognized one of the cops that was interviewing the traveler guy, and then also I recognized uh, another actor, the um, chick who played in the second Mummy. I'm pretty sure that was her that played as. The, the vampire's like mate or something like that. And then the guy it was showing right before this, he, I believe, played in, and I didn't look up his name, but I'm pretty sure this is the guy he played in Selena as Selena's brother in the movie with Jennifer Lopez. So it was cool to see recognizable faces. Most people, I had no idea who they were. For the most part, the acting was really good. The only weak spot in the acting was the one of the cops that was interviewing him, the woman. I didn't think she did that great in the acting. I mean, she had some funny lines, but her delivery just didn't come across very like it, it didn't feel natural or organic. It felt like she was acting. And I believe that is the same actress, Sonia Eddy. At the end, they had a dedication to her. So unfortunately, she passed away, I, I think, in the past year or two. So that was kind of sad to see that. I did stay to pretty much the whole end credits because I was just biding my time until Haunting in Venice started. But yeah, it was a pretty fun. Uh, I think horror fans will enjoy it. Anthology fans will enjoy it. The only other con that I can think of, it's just a really small little tiny little thing. It hardly bears mentioning, but it was a mistake I saw. There's a point where the traveler, that's the actress I'm talking about. There's a point where the traveler, he has an injured hand. His right hand is injured. And at one point he takes off his bandage and there's no need for the bandage to be off again. And then in the next that's the guy who played in Selena. Pretty sure that's him. And anyway, in the next picture it shows of him or the next scene where it shows him talking to the cops again, the bandage is back on his hand. So that was a definite mistake. Too bad they couldn't have gone and like done some digital fixing and edited that out. That's really minor. It's minor. It's nothing that detracted at all from my enjoyment of this film. Even the other thing I was mentioning about the, the female cop, that was a tiny issue. I really liked this guy here and he has a familiar face, but I'm honestly not sure where I've seen him before. I liked his screen presence. I liked his delivery. The story he was telling was, he, he was like so straight faced about this horrific stuff he was telling. And of course the cops who were interviewing him are like, oh yeah, you are, you are bullshitting us so much, you know, but he was deadly serious. But then he would say these little funny things. And I, I really also liked how his voice sounded. I don't know what it was about the audio, but the way his voice sounded to me, I really enjoy. I have a feeling if I I listen to it with earbuds, I would enjoy it even more. Maybe it has something to do with his with his accent, his dialect, but um, I, I appreciated every moment he was on the screen. And in all honesty, I want to see a full length movie with his story. I want to see the Traveler's story. So every time it broke away to a new story, I was kind of like, oh, let's get back to the Traveler. I mean, even though I, I did enjoy the stories as they were told, they were interesting diversions. My main focus was I wanted to get back to this stuff. What was happening here with San Lamorte and the Traveler? Anyway, as a whole, it was, it was enjoyable and I'm glad I got the chance to watch it. I do recommend it to horror fans and horror anthology fans. And uh, yeah, can't think of anything else to add. So I'm going to wrap this up because I have to do another review for Haunting in Venice. So I'll see you guys later. Adios. Mm -hmm.